I'm a big fan of State of Siege games. This is a system that was originally pioneered by Victory Point games and has been used several times since, many times I would say actually. It's a great system to simulate complex geopolitical events over a period of time and that's why we have games in the system about uh, the American Civil War, about the French Revolution, about the end of the Ottoman Empire, and now we have one about Gorbachev and the fall of communism. So you are a consultant of Gorbachev, not Gorbachev himself. You don't really control where the guy goes, but you are doing all the hard work of trying to uh, hold the Soviet Union together and or to transition it towards maybe a different political system that still resembles the old one that maybe doesn't have such a tight grip on Eastern Europe countries but at the same time doesn't fall apart and doesn't suffer a coup. So this is your task. As in other state of siege games, you have a central space, which is the main space that you need to defend and then you have tracks representing the position of, 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 well, depending on the game, in this game, the people of different areas of Soviet Russia that you're trying not to annoy too much. And so the closer the position of these markers is to Moscow on their track, the worse it is for you. Different game events will move these markers closer to Moscow and you will use your game resources to push them back as far back as you can. This is the general idea. We also have state assets here. We have a five-year plan, media culture, military might, and also you wanna keep these healthy. And, and on these tracks, that means that these markers will be as rightmost as you possibly can place them, but different game events will move them to the left and you will use game resources to push them back to the right. When one of these state assets markers enters one of these boxes with a C or one of these other markers enters the Moscow space, you will have a, an attempted coup, which may or may not end the game. We have the Politburo section of the game, which is divided into two boxes, opposition and support. A lot of politicians are in support during the game. Many game events. Oh, the camera almost fell, just like the Soviet Union. And just like a coup that I was able to avoid, I was able to avoid the disaster. So different game events will move those politicians from the support to the opposition. When a coup is attended, attempted, again, in that case, or in that case, you roll two dice. If the result is equal to or lower than the number of politicians in opposition to you, you lose the game. The coup is successful, the old system is destroyed overnight and that's just bad for you and you and the game ends in your defeat. That's why the more people are here, the more likely you are to low under that number and that's why you don't want a lot of people in opposition if you can avoid it. But if you roll higher than the number of politicians in the opposition box, then the coup fizzles and the game piece that caused the attempted coup bounces back to the next box and hopefully you'll do something about it next time. You will try to push that piece further back so they don't try it again. The main engine of the game revolves around a deck of cards which is divided into four smaller decks. As you can see, they're color-coded. You shuffle each deck individually and you will go through each deck in a specific order. This deck first and then this one and then this one and then this one. The point of the game is to survive until the end of the game, which means to survive until the deck is depleted. And at the end, you will score points based on various factors, such as the position of the markers on the, on the board. The further they are from Moscow, the more points they'll score you. Plus, you will score points in other ways, such as if you saved several resources. Now, the general idea is this. Each turn, you will draw a card and you will resolve the card from top left going down to right bottom. There's a marker here to remind you this is the end of the game, of the turn. This marker here is a reminder that time passes, so you will use markers 
to keep track of the year that you're in and the season. Each card represents a season. This is important because there are such some time events such as the election of the new president. Reagan is president uh, at the beginning. Uh, George Bush or there's a small chance that Dukakis will become the president after 1888 and that will may change things, that affects things. Their posture is not as, as tough as Reagan's. So, you start by, by moving the time marker, then if there is such a symbol, the G with a die there, then you need to roll a die to determine where Gorbachev goes. If he's in the Soviet Union, there's a chance that he'll go on vacation or on a tour to bask in the love that Western countries have for him. And so you roll a die and there's a chance that he'll move to the Gorby Mania box. When he's not there, you will have fewer actions, so it's not all that good for you that he goes. However, sometimes it is good. Different events may place demonstration markers on the board. Demonstration markers may be bad or good for you. These mean that when you try to pass a test, you will have a penalty. This marker means that you will have a bonus. When Gorby moves from the, from the Polyborough box to the Gorby Mania box, you can choose to remove every demonstration marker from the board if you have any. All go or no, or no marker go. So that's another interesting choice there because I got two good ones and a negative one, but the negative one is somewhere where I really don't want the penalty. So I have an interesting choice right there. So Gorby bounces back and forth, Gorby mania! To, okay, let's go and get some work done actually. So, um, then there may be other events uh, indicated on the card. The demonstration, that means that that's precisely when we place demonstration markers and we roll dice to determine on which track the demonstration marker goes and how far it goes. Uh, disaster, then we draw a disaster marker. There's going to be a pile of disaster markers and you simply implement that event. Uh, there may be a massacre and that also has its own stack of events of, of, um, of massacre events. Then you draw a, a token from the massacre stack. That means that you, that you killed a bunch of people in some, uh, in some region of Russia. And for some reason, people got annoyed. Who would have thunk? After you resolve that stuff, then you will see these symbols here with the triangles pointing down, and that simply means a worsening of the situation in that field. It may be in the assets, so media and culture and military might go down by one, for example, media and culture and military might, or it may be that it's both an asset and one, so we got a favorite plan, both an asset and or, and or, a marker on one of the tracks. So simply resolve all the bad stuff. There may be other events that are described there. And you know the heart of these games really is in the Chrome, is in seeing all of these events. Then finally, when you see this little lightning bolt, woo, it's only time for you to do stuff after you suffered all of these horrible things. You will get a number of efforts, or no efforts, as these cards say. But sometimes you do get efforts. Yay, efforts. Efforts is the number of resources, number of attempts that you can make to improve things on the board. And you will always get the number of efforts indicated there, which may be zero, plus two if Gorby is not hanging out with his Western friends. If Gorby's at home doing his darn job, then you get two. So you will get anywhere between zero and, I guess, something. But, for example, here, if Gorbachev is at home, then I'll get zero plus two. If it's abroad, then nothing. That turn I just got sm smacked in the face by fate and other adversities, and that's it. So you get those actions. Hooray! Those actions that you get, those efforts, for each effort you can try to uh, push one of these markers uh, towards a better situation. To do so, you roll a die and you need to roll equal to or higher than the number in the box in which you're trying to place the marker. So, for example, I roll, I roll three or more, then I spent an effort and said, wait, I decided to spend another effort to improve my median culture, I roll four or more, that also works. You can roll on multiple times on a track here. 
And the same applies to the tracks on the board. If a marker is not if a marker is not where you like it to be, then you roll a die. And this time you're successful if you roll equal to or higher than the number printed there. So the people of Russia, they're kind of pushovers. You only need three or more to convince them to go back to Worker's Paradise or at least to move one box back per successful attempt. Uh, the Caucasus people are a little tougher. Also, game events actually will make people tougher. They will be improved for them, worsened for you. Uh, versions of these markers that come into play and so people become more stubborn as the game goes by and becomes harder and harder to push them back. But basically the general idea of the game is that after you resolve all the bad stuff that may happen to you, you use your efforts to roll dice to push back boxes. You can also get extra efforts by doing several things such as by releasing countries in the Warsaw Pact. So they will be extra efforts that you do by releasing these things, which is a limited thing, however. You can remove military forces from different parts of the world, and Western powers really like that, in which case you get an extra number of efforts, but you may face retaliation at home, so actually uh, the military might may be worsened by that. You may remove nuclear weapons that you have been storing abroad, and again, that also buys you extra efforts. The Merlin Wall may go down at some point, freeing up more resources. The KGB, you start with three KGB markers, and there's a friendly, <laughs> friendly well-known face there. Uh, when you remove a KGB marker, then you get a free effort. But again, that may uh, worsen things uh, later, may, uh, may affect your score. So there are many ways in which you can generate extra efforts, which is great because, of course, it means more choices for you, more decisions, more things that you can do. So there's a general idea. During a turn, you draw the card, uh, apply all the best stuff that's happening to you, d you resolve, use your efforts, uh, to improve things and at the end if there are game pieces in boxes that have that hex there that 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 hex there that indicates that you have politicians that will move from the support to the from the support to the opposition box and there's a general idea for garbage of follow communism play until the entire deck if you can in which case you win the game but sometimes you score will be so low that you don't necessarily feel like you won, or you fail to play through the entire deck, in which case you lose for sure. I like the states of siege system very much, but there are several things that they can go wrong. Uh, for example, in the timing of the events of the decks. There are some of those uh, games in the past that start very easy for a long time, and then the difficulty ramps up all of a sudden, and I think, well, I. I may well just start from the late deck because there is no challenge early on and then it just feels irrelevant. Uh, this is not the case. Actually, what I, what I liked about this game is that it really creates a parable that goes up or say it goes down. It depends on, on which way you're looking at it. But there's a nice gradual progression as, uh, yes, things are easier early on, but they don't feel mindless and you know things are gonna get worse later so you're trying to preserve your resources to push some of the assets because they may give you certain uh, bonuses later uh, but it's not mindless even early on uh, because you may have a, a bad set of events in which uh, one of the things becomes a, one of those fronts so to speak gets very close and even if you lose some politicians to the opposition early on it's just not good again because you know things are gonna get bad later but then gradually you start losing some allies from the Warsaw Pact and uh, first one front then another then another they gradually become a little stronger and they start moving faster and Gorbachev is nowhere to be seen is there having fun in Gorby Mania um, so you really have the sense of progression of mounting dread of the entire thing things slowly like falling on your head but in slow motion slow but constant which to me really is the hallmark of a good game in this specific system another thing that is hard to achieve in the states of siege system and the best games do do achieve that is to have enough chrome and enough variety 
that you really have the sense that you are that you are um, perceiving, that you're exploring a historical event, and at the same time, to enrich what is at the core, what at the core is such a simple mechanic, such a simple idea. And so you have to do that uh, without actually the whole thing becoming then too burdensome, too complicated. There are some games in which you are moving around so many game pieces, you are updating so many stats and things before you roll the die once or twice, then you draw a card, and again you are updating the game state for a long time, and then you roll the die twice. So g striking that balance between the crawl, which mainly is stuff that happens outside of your control, and yet giving you enough stuff to do that that is worth to do all that updating, and at the same time that you feel that you are not in control, but necessarily, but you are an agent in the event. And again, in this sense, Gorbachev, Fall of Communism, I think does really, really well. I think it may be just one of the ones that does it best. There are some that, oh, an event happens, now I'm going to set up a big battle, etc., etc., which just makes the game a lot heavier, and it's if I played it before the pandemic, that was perfectly fine. But now that I'm that I'm in quarantine and I've been for a long time and I have this pandemic brain that is just not as good as it used to be, then a game that still gives me a lot of history, a lot of information, a lot of historical flavor, and still has a simple engine at the core, and doesn't require too much work with the updating from card to card, that is precisely what I want, and lucky me, it's exactly what I found. Because the idea is still so simple. Actually, you can spend your markers, really. In other games, you can do a ton of different things. Here, you can spend your efforts, your resources, your efforts, only to push the assets or to push the fronts back. That's all you can do. What are the interesting decisions, then? Well, they are in, uh, um, first, which ones to go for, to push one in particular, or to try to get... Uh, more of a balanced situation, but then most importantly, there are all those extra assets uh, such as the troops that you can withdraw, uh, uh, the KGB units, uh, forcel packs, countries, all those assets that you can spend. And that is where you have an interesting idea because, again, you don't have to memorize 10 rules, 10 mechanics. The rule is always any of those things that you spend gives you extra efforts. They still work in such a very simple, straightforward fashion. But at the same time, they do give me decisions that I have to make. And so you have interesting gameplay with a certain degree of depth without really adding any extra procedures, any extra complexity. Yeah, there are many different types of events. The massacres work slightly different from the from the uh, from the disasters, which work slightly different from the general events, etc., etc. But ultimately, draw a token and look at the player aid. Draw a card, look at the player aid. And after a while, you'll know how these things work. So really, uh, you can start playing the game uh, uh, very quite quickly. I would almost say set it up, and once you know what your efforts do, then draw a card and read the rule book as the sections apply, and you'll discover the game as you go. So you have a game that is really very simple. It has to be one of the simplest games in the States of Siege system that I can think of at its core. But at the same time, you have so much flavor, so much history, so many interesting events that do not overwhelm the overall core and they keep it lean and, and the, gore, the core still is lean, playable and interesting and exciting. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy with Gorbachev, the Fall of Communism. I hadn't played a State of Siege game in a while, so my memories of the previous ones may have faded out a little bit. But from what I recall, this really, um, this is a really solid, really solid new entry in this venerable system. Definitely has to be one of the best ones, or definitely one that I enjoyed very much. I think you have a lot of replay value, and it uh, could be a good starting point. It's not the simplest that there is, but not the most complicated either. But it may be one of those that has the best ratio between how simple it is and yet how much chrome and how much history you get. So I'm really happy, very impressed, very pleased with Gorbachev.